Genesis 39, you will find those two verses that I read again last night. I'll read again tonight. The Bible says in verse 2, And the Lord was with Joseph. He was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. We preached last night on don't overlook the Lord at work. Tonight I want to preach for just a few moments, and I'll skip all the introductions and try to get to what God said to do on the subject don't underlearn when God's at work Joseph had to be taught how to deal and prepared for the job that God had given him to do God had seen fit that he was the one that God was going to use to save his people. God knew there's going to be a pit. God knew there's going to be Potiphar's house. God knew there's going to be a prison. And God knew there's going to be a palace. God knew there was a people in need of salvation. God had a man that was not when this thing started the man that he ended up being when this thing was over. There was some great learning that had to transpire in some 15 odd maybe years or a little longer than that, truthfully it was. He had to develop it. He had to, he had to be what he needed to be to make a difference because guess what? He had one thing in mind and one thing God wanted him to do. And that's the same people. Now I'm here to tell you again, you got one thing to do, and that's change this thing, change this world we're living in with the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation will make a difference, and I'm here to tell you, there's nothing in our lives more important than seeing somebody come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. How long has it been since you shared with someone? The Lord Jesus Christ, are you? And, and here's the thing. There's so many times we get in revival and we get excited. We get on fire and we go out and we tell everyone about Jesus. But when problems come, when the pit comes, when, the, when they, oh, everything's going great and it starts falling apart, we let up. You and I, don't, I don't know whether you know this or not, but it's been said by greater men than me and a lot always will be said by greater men than me. Guess what? If you're not in a valley, you're coming out of one or heading to one. Life as, a, as we, you and I know it, as a child of God, a lot of times is valleys. And if you and I don't know how to learn how to deal with these things, so we can in the midst of our deepest valley point someone to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're in a mess. If you and I have to wait to the mountaintop experiences to make a difference in somebody's life we ain't got but a very short time in our life to get it done amen seems like more times as the dear brother said we see all the heartaches of life coming but when we're down in our back when the tire's blowing are we still telling somebody about Jesus are we still have we learned how to do that this world listen I, I've heard for years that the Bible is the most number one book that's sold in America well it ain't the no, most number one book read in America there may be millions of them sold, but there ain't millions of them read. Because you know what? They're not reading the Bible. They're watching you. You are their Bible. Amen. You are the one that they're seeing. They want to see how you handle it. I've literally had people tell me in my life that God has given me I am not ashamed of it I am proud of the life that God has given me. My life is different than a lot of preachers and a lot of pastors and I know that. But I've literally been in situations, was it that long ago, dear friend, dear, dear man that I met through, the, through a business world, he had, his son, 26 years old, I won't give the details, but he ended up passing away. And at 26 years old, they called me and said, he called me, I knew, I knew, I'd heard that he had passed away. I called, reached out to him, said, listen, I want you to know I'm praying for you, you're in our thoughts, you're in our prayers. If I can do anything, let me know.
Next day the phone rung and he said, you can. I said, what's that? He said, you're the only preacher we know. Will you please preach his funeral? Drove down there to preach his funeral and in the midst of that, it blessed their heart. It was, very, it was different. They weren't saved. They didn't know God that much. They were Jews, but they raised Jewish, but they didn't know anything about it. But in the midst of that, he worked for Lowe's. The vice president of Lowe's was sitting there in the midst of that congregation as I began to preach and I began to think about what what God was a doing and I thought in my life I'm here how do I deal with this I'm going to let the Lord shine he's there this is one time that I'll have an opportunity to share Jesus no matter what's going on may I say it in such a way that I can learn how to do it and do it right you and I don't understand it ain't always easy going now as we go through here you know God honored his life you know Joseph was honored God honored everything he done because guess what he learned how to deal with life in the midst of all the problems of life you and I got to learn how to do that I don't know about you but life gets different every day I don't have life figured out like I thought I did I've faced things over the last couple of years that I thought I'd never face you I'm not the only one you said preacher what'd you face well just like you life life it's came but what you and I got to learn how when God is working and we're in, we're in the place of our lives we must learn from God and we cannot I, listen to me I do believe we will be held responsible for underlearning. It is amazing to me how we will study and we will educate ourselves in so many things, but when it comes to the things of God, guess what we want to do? God just slap it in me. I don't know whether you know this or not, but that 30-second devotion you've got on your phone is not enough to get you through life. And a 30 second devotion you can learn a lot but I'm going to tell you something you can't learn everything to life or that, or that God would honor your life without trying to learn from him right. now as we, as we look for briefly just a few minutes I need you to remember he always stayed in a place that God could use him God had to prepare him God had to develop him God had to make the man that he had him to be through every situation in life God had to show and he had to be willing listen to me as I said last night, it's not that God's not willing. God is willing, God is able, and God is working. But are we willing? Are we allowing God? Will we beg God to help us learn in this situation we're in that we might see someone come to know Jesus Christ? Right now, you say, preacher, if things was better, I could do better. You don't have to learn how to do good right where you're at in your life. Now, there's a couple of things about Joseph you have, you've got to understand you've got to figure out and listen number one I think the greatest the most valuable thing you can have in your life is a relationship with God amen but I believe the second greatest thing you can have in life is a relationship with people take away everything you've got you can get it back but people The people that I have in my life have changed my life. They have made me a better person. And I need you to understand how valuable it is that God has left us here to build relationships with people that we might see them come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Now he's preparing Joseph. He wants Joseph to be developed. He wants Joseph to have what he needs to have. He wants Joseph to learn along the way. He wants Joseph to keep the right attitude in the midst of his learning. I don't know about you, but when it comes to learning, sometimes I get irritated. I can't get it. I have a computer. Back some years ago, I started fooling with electronics a little bit. And I started printing my outlines out. Reason I did is because I can't read my own writing. You've heard about people talking about speaking in tongues. I write in tongues. Started typing it out. I went over there to the, uh, the motel. What a wonderful place that is. I went over there to print that thing out. I said, I, I've done everything but lay hands on that low-down printer trying to get it to print in color. 
And then walked over and asked that girl, I said, what's wrong with this computer, this printer? It won't print in color. She said, it ain't supposed to. <laughs> I need you to understand that's a minor thing in life, but it doesn't take us much. People are watching everything we do. When someone pulls out in front of you and they irritate you, the person right beside you is watching to see how good of a Christian you really are and how you handle that. And you say, preacher, I don't do a good job. You've got to learn how to do it. You don't develop that just because you're a Christian. You develop that because you want to learn how to be a Christian. And here's what you need to understand. Everything that I'm learning is about one thing, and that is somebody knowing Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You want to see your life get on? Little Ella, I've done everything I can to try to win her. I don't know where she's at. I even brought her some M&Ms tonight. That didn't work. I'm going to figure out, bless God. I don't know, does she like $100 bills? Yeah. Do everything I can try to win that little girl over. I FaceTimed my grandson today. He said, Papa, he said, Papa, Papa, Papa. He says. I like him little young'uns. They bring an excitement. You want to you, let me tell you what gets exciting in here. Now say, wait about 10 years before y'all have any children, all right? Everybody said amen to that. Hey Amen. You don't get those years back. But if you want to see life come in this church, bring a bunch of babies in here. Lord God, it does something for us, don't it? Man, they put a kick in our step. You'll see some people that just barely can walk when that baby comes around. They'll be hurting in their back. They'll be hurting in their hip. And they'll be doing everything else. And when that baby comes around, they'll jump down there and get rid of it and grin and smile, shake it around and bounce it, lay it down. Oh, dear God, I can't hardly even walk. You know what? That baby made them forget about all the aches and pains they had because of that new life. That is just like a babe in Christ. That is just like when somebody comes in here and gets washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Revival will come in God's house. That's what it's all about. It's about people getting saved. And listen to me, I need you to understand if you'll get on fire. And what? I don't know how many of them flash drives you got, but unto God give them out. I make it as simple as I can. We've got a book there at the house I learned, I, I, I've been using called Paid and Full. I pass them out left and right. They got nothing but the Word of God in them. People won't read the Bible, but they'll read a book with the Bible in it. Started passing them things out, giving them out. I figured out that man just the other day, he made them things free to the public. You can download it for free. It don't cost you a dime. You know what I done? I QR coded that, bless God. I got 500 little pa little pamphlets at the house wait, getting printed today, waiting on me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pass them out, and I'm going to let them read, and I'm going to let them get to know the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm going to hope and pray to God. There's a hunger inside of their hearts. Yeah. You say, preacher, what's the big deal? You ever noticed anything about, you, you notice anything about this society? I promise you, no lot that in the next 10 minutes of me preaching, if I'm done in 10 or 15 minutes, somebody will look at their phone. You may sneak around and do it, but you'll do it. Yep, right, yep. That phone got you wrapped up. Yep, right. Well, bless God, I made it so simple. When you're wrapped up in it, sit there and read the scriptures and get born again and know more about Jesus. Yep, right. Convenience, learn how to do it. Now listen, that's what it's all about. God blessed Joseph. Joseph knew what Romans chapter 8 verse 18 and verse 28 was and he'd never even read it. Amen. He knew that all things work to the glory of God. He knew that you know what? The suffering that he went through was not worthy to be compared. Why did he know that? Because he was a child of God living in a way that God would honor his life. Now a couple quick things and I'll hurry. What did he have to learn? And by the way, about the time that everything got normal for Joseph, Bible says in chapter 39, verse number 11, and it came to pass about that time. Guess what? After 13 years, she's fixing to change again. About the time you think you got life figured out, don't worry, it's going to change. If there's one thing I've learned anything about life, life changes. Amen. It's something about me, something about the situation, something about the circumstance. It ain't always going to be the same. But you know what is? God is. And I've got to learn from Him to know that guess what? No matter what society I'm in, I can still love people and lead them to the Lord. Now that being said, quickly, the Lord was preparing him. What did he have to learn? Number one, he had to learn the language. Do you realize when he left home and went to Egypt, 
They didn't speak the same language. Now you say, preacher, it wasn't that far. If it wasn't that far and the language wasn't that different, how come in chapter 42 and verse 23, the Bible said he talked to his brothers with an interpreter? You know what he done? He was in a place he couldn't even communicate. You ever been there? Old fellow in our church, Sam's his name. I don't know if you, Brother Doug, if he is there, any time you've been there, usually Sunday mornings, about all Sam's help to let him come. But he sits right back here. God got to moving through the other day, and God was just stirring, just kind of like it was around here. People's in the altar and testifying. Sam got up, and he said, Listen, I need to tell you people something. He said, I'm deaf. He said, I'm just about deaf. He said, I've heard 25, maybe 25% of what anybody in this building has said this morning. But he said, you know what? I can feel him. He said, I may not be able to hear what's going on, but he said, you know what? I'm a coming back time after time after time after time again because guess what? I may not hear, but I can feel him. Amen. What he said, he said, listen to me. Well, he said he learned a language. Now I want to ask you a question. The Bible said in chapter 39, verse number 1, and Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian. He was someone, listen to me, that Egyptian mean he was someone of that different race that had that cultural language down pat that guess what? God wanted him to learn from the best. Amen. I need you to understand something. Potiphar was the first, he was the main security guard of Pharaoh. I don't know about you, but I know people that are high up the ladder in places, they talk good. That's why I ain't never been high up. I don't talk good. I try. I've worked hard at it. Now you have to say, under God, Miss Annette, you know good and well, after 22 years, I'm better than what I was when the first time you ever met me. Say amen. I am. I'm a trying. I'm a trying. It ain't much better, but I'm a trying. Because you know what? I don't want people, listen to me. I need you to understand something. Lord God, I don't want you to know. I don't want you to just remember me. I don't want you to remember some kind of Ewan's word that I say. You know what I want? I want you to remember the one I'm talking about. And the best way to do that is to learn the right kind of language. Amen. And say, you know what? Here's where we are. Well, bless God, I'm just going to open my mouth and it's going to come out. Do you want to be known for your mouth or known for your Lord. I don't want to be known for my mouth. I don't want to be known for my southern lingo. I don't want to be known for the words that I use that other people don't use. I want to be known by someone that when he opens their mouth, God comes out. Amen. And that's what you and I, hey, in the pit, does God come out? In the palace, does God come out? What about in Potiphar's house? Does God come out? Amen. I used to laugh. I loved my daddy. But when we as kids at home, we had, a we had a house phone. People don't know what that is anymore. We had one of them rotary dial things. Don't know what that is no more. If my daddy ever answered the phone and my daddy talked with a different accent, I knew there's somebody important on the other side. I could tell who daddy was talking to whether it mattered or not. Guess what? Still to this day, I can tell if it's important or if it's not. Listen to me. Guess what? Now you say, I don't never do that. I bet you 50% of the people in this building, if somebody important comes in your life, you talk you dignified if you can be. Huh? You, 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 and by the way, ain't it amazing how God gives us two ears and one mouth? Listen to twice as much as we say. Ain't you glad God, I believe some people got two mouths and one ear. Because they talk twice as much as they listen. Amen. Preach out what you say. He went through every sacrifice they could to learn the language. I ask us in the pit at Potiphar's house, when things are going good, then it falls apart. Do we have the right language that people will know? Guess what? It's about saving people. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't know whether you know this or not, but in those places of life when they come, whether it be the pit, whether it be Potiphar's house, whether it be prison, whether it be the palace, it don't matter. All of them come, and sometimes they catch you off guard, and sometimes you may not know exactly how to talk. Amen. That is not just naturally inbreded in you. You've got to learn it. God, help me. 
to say the right thing. God, teach me in the midst of what I'm going through with that you would get glory in somebody that knows Jesus. God, teach me the right language. Teach me to. God, if we went across this room, oh, dear brother, I pray for you. I have never in my life had to do what you do. Never. My wife is my supporter. I faced her three times today just to see her face, just to get my clothes right. I steamed my coat off today as she was watching me on FaceTime do it. I, honest to God, I'd be lost. First time in 28 years that I've ever preached a week on meeting that my wife ain't been present. How you do this? It ain't me that does it. I said, God learned me how to. Now listen to me, dear brother. I need you to know something. God can teach you a language in the midst of your pit in the midst of things coming apart, in the midst of your prison, no matter what it feels like, God can teach you a language that every time you open your mouth, she sees Jesus. Will you learn it? We want God to just, you know what we do. Well, I'm saved, preacher, I'm coming to church, and then all of a sudden God just slap it in us. God could do that. Scott Moneyham, I mean, you know Scott. I know you just do. Scott Moneyham was my Old Testament survey teacher. And it, the first time he ever prayed this prayer, it made, about, made me mad. I about lost. I about just got upset about it. We had read first semester, we'd taken a test. He stood up there, bro. Before you take the test, let's pray. He said, Now, Lord, please touch these men as they've studied. God, bring it to their memory if they've studied it. But, Lord, if they ain't studied it, don't give them no freebies. I thought I was the only one looking until I looked around and everybody there that would never know Scott, Brother Scott was just looking at him like, really? Come on, what about the grace of God right here, fella? Some of us still work a full-time job trying to do this. Come on, God, just give me something just a little bit, and he does. But here's the thing, we expect him to without any efforts from us. God, help us to learn the language. God, help us to learn who's Lord. Look what he said in verse number 39. He said, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him. You know who his Lord was? Potiphar. He was bought. He was owned. My Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body, get this, and in your spirit, which are God's. It's easy sometimes to think we can glorify God in our body, but that inner man that nobody don't know what's going on right now, that's the one we have problems with glorifying God. Amen. He said, hey, you're born with a pride. I need you to understand something. You need to know in the pit, in Potiphar's house, in the prison, or in the palace, guess what? Ownership, the only time. Now listen, once he left the pit and he got to Potiphar's house, ownership never changed no matter what place he is in. Nobody else ever bought Joseph but Potiphar I remember the day I was bought by a price and it don't matter where I've been it don't matter where I, what place I am in life guess what I still know who owns me you got to know who the Lord is now you say preacher what are you saying some things about realizing knowing who the Lord is and, and learning if we will learn who the Lord is of our life it will help us accept life our biggest problem is accepting where we are. Right. Dear brother, is it not hard to accept the backache? Yeah. Tough, ain't it? Is it not hard to accept, dear brother, the situation you jones are in? Because you know what? We think so many times we've done nothing to deserve it, and truth that be told. But it still don't change. Somebody asked me something, said, Preacher, 
can you just tell me why, I don't remember what it was, why such and such and such and such? I said, I want to ask you a question. If I knew why and I told you why, would it change anything? Amen. Now, there's some of you in here got something you're dealing with and it's because you're singing. You don't know that's why it is. But if God told you that's why it was, how would you feel about it? That'd break my heart. I'd cry. Maybe it wasn't my sin. Maybe it was a decision I made. Maybe the decision I made wasn't a sin, but the decision I made transformed somebody's life, including mine. But it wasn't a sin. But God told me why, and that decision that I made was the very reason my life would never be the same if God told me why. It would break my heart. Yes. Learning how to accept where we are will help us understand who the Lord of our life is. Yes. And by the way, that being said, as I go through here, let me ask you something. Say something. If you realize who the Lord is, do you know what? Who's responsible? Who was responsible for everything Joseph had to have? His Lord. Yes. Hello! Yes. Do you know who's responsible for everything in your life? Yes. Your Lord. All I'm responsible for is doing what He told me to do. That's all I'm responsible for. I'm not responsible. We were to death. We were to death about everything under the sun. A preacher friend of mine, I was telling, I was telling him about building it. You, Brother Doug, you just want to build and needing to build, and he knows we're in the midst of it. He said, God is my witness. He said, You know what? He said, If I had to build again, I'd probably resign. He said, Lord, of mercy, that's the worst thing I ever had to do in my life. It's stressful. He said, it's a spiritual warfare. Fighting battles like left and right. Here's the thing. It don't matter what we do. Hey, and by the way, I don't know, who, I don't know who's responsible for that, but I want a copy of it. That, the video. Whichever one, the flash drive, whatever, I want one. Because you know what? You know who's responsible for that? God is. Amen. You know who's going to foot the bill? God is. And the quicker we learn how to deal with the Lord of our life, the quicker we'll realize he's responsible. You can't hold somebody's responsible that don't, you don't give them, the, give them the range to run your life. And by saying you're my Lord, you give them the reins to run your life. And Joseph didn't have, he had to learn. Listen to me, he had to learn how to do that. He said, I know what I'm going to do, preacher. I ain't made him the Lord of my life. I'm going to come up here and get on the altar. I know I'm saved. I know I'm on my way to heaven. But sometimes I try to hang hold the reins. I'm going to come up there. I'm going to lay it down. And I'm going to walk out the door. And I'm never going to pick him up again. Well, good luck with that. I hope you can. But life will catch you off track. And you know what you'll do next time? You'll think, Jesus take the wheel and you the one won't turn it loose long enough for him to take it. God's my co-pilot on the back of the car. That's where a lot of you, that's where God is a lot of times. Hey man, he is the co-pilot. He ain't the pilot. We need to turn it. And, and that's not something, listen, that's not just something we wake up one day and say we're going to do. We got to learn how to do that. We got to learn how to do that. We got to learn how to say, Lord, okay, Lord, here I am. This is you. Now you know what's going on in my life. I trust you, Lord. I know you've got this, Lord. Just show me what to do and I'll do it. But it's all up to you because you are the Lord of this situation. But it's a learning process. Whether it's the pit, whether it's in Potiphar's house, whether it's in the prison, or whether it's in the palace, it does not matter. It's still a learning process. And I'm here to tell you, what you learn about the Lord of your life in the pit won't work at the Lord of your life in Potiphar's house. You say one of these days, I'm just going to learn it one good time and I'll have it all. Guess what will happen? Life will change. Life will change. Somebody said to me, I, I don't know what the saying is here, but I know what it is at the church. Everybody asks, talk about the golden years. Most of our old people says, what in the world does that mean, preacher? What's the golden years? They work till they're 80 years old. Don't retire till they're 81 or 82 years old. Then they won't know what the golden years is. And most of them that retired at 81 die by the time they're 85. They throw in the towel and give up everything. Amen. Amen. Some of you are close to retirement. It's 11 days, you say? Where'd she go? 11 days? Are you still working, sir? Get a job. 
12 days, you better be enrolled somewhere. Because you're fixing to learn something you ain't learned in a long time. You say, we've been married long enough to figure this out. You bless God, wait till you get to the house for about a week and a half and then come tell me that story. Because you know what? It's going to change. Little sweetie that used to get up every morning ain't going to have to get up every morning. Now you say, well, she'll be just as sweet or sweeter. She probably will, but it'll still change. She may go through what other people go through with and they feel like they're not needed. They sit around and flip over their hands and deal with life. What am I doing here? What's going on? I was such a, I had this going on. I had people needing me going this way, going that way. You say, preacher, what are you saying? Life changes, amen. So you better learn how to let him be the Lord of your life because guess what? In 11 days from now, it's changing. And it'll be a new learning experience. You got to learn that and be the Lord. Say, Lord, here I am. I accept your plan. I accept what you got going on, but I want to learn. And by the way, in the midst of that, the main goal is not enjoy retire retirement. The main goal is still the main goal that somebody know Jesus. That's the problem. We lose the main goal because the main goal for everybody's life in here is somebody know Jesus tomorrow because of us. And that only comes because we learn it. We have to learn who's the Lord. We also have to learn, number three, logistics. We've got to learn the plan. Do you realize the plan in the pit and the plan at Potiphar's house and the plan in the prison and the plan in the palace is all different? Every time he changed, the plan changed. Still, the end goal was the same. But the way the operation of the plan was, didn't cha it changed. And you know what? He had to be willing to learn that. I'll never get over the first, where I pastor now. One of the ladies of the church, she came to me, and I hadn't ever had to deal with this as a little minor thing. She had drove the, she had drove the church van for many, many years. Sweet, precious lady, her and her husband. They drove the church van, brought the kids. She come to me one day, and she said, Preacher, she said, I'm going to kill the next that takes the next that crosses my path. She said, I'm going to kill that next young, and I'm going to pinch his low-down head off. They're getting under my nerves. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm about ready to explode. I said, you know what it's time to do? She said, what's that? I said, change jobs. Before you burn out on that one, you're done. I'm going to find somebody else to fill yours. You find something else. Amen. That's about 10 years ago. She loves them babies more now than she ever did. She just don't ride the bus. Her love for them now is more than it was then. Fact of the matter was, we just had an outing on Saturday, and she had 68 people to show up at the little outing she planned and bought a few pizzas, and the next thing she know, she didn't have enough stuff enough, enough to go around. Started ordering more and getting more just so she'd make sure and have enough for everybody because guess what? That love that she had is greater now than it ever was, but guess what? The plan changed, but God's goal didn't change. Right. And that's what you got to learn. Some of you in here, you know what you do? You, you, you may need to change. God may be fixing to change you. May God may just change you. You may not, you may, you may, the preacher may, God may be fixing to tell the preacher and he's fixing to change you. Amen. Yeah, amen. You got a leader for a reason. Say amen right there. I ain't getting off on that, but bless God. Listen to me. Hey Amen. Yeah. You got a pastor for one reason and that's to help plant, help, uh, help keep you on the path. But in the midst of that, they had to learn it. Isaiah chapter 55, verse number 9 says this. It says, For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Do you know what? God's ways sometimes may not make a lick of sense to us, but they always work. Yeah, Amen. Now you listen to me. You heard me say this one time before, and I'll say it again. I've preached for 28 years now. And in the midst of my 28 years, most of that, I pre well, for all except the last 13, the first part of that, first 15 of that, I preach, don't ever go anywhere in life, they ain't a good church. Amen. Don't ever move locations that you don't know there's a good church. But I had to learn how to do that. God plucked me up, put me in a town, bought a house, without a place in my eyes but in God's eyes he always had a place I just had to learn the plan I had to go against what I'd always preached 
what I'd always preach didn't fly now. And the fact of the matter was, it eat me up because I had preached it to people that I loved, but yet was now doing the thing that I said was wrong. By the way, I never did find no Bible to back up why I was doing it after I figured it out. I just, my plan, my ideal, my thought, and I thought God had to honor it. Found out, guess what? You better know God. In the midst of that plan, I had to learn. I remember going to a little old church. Before, before we ever went to Liberty, I remember going to a little old church. Wasn't bigger than nothing. We didn't know what it was. It was an independent Baptist church. It was a small thing. And we went there on Sunday morning. And well, to be honest, we, it just wasn't greatest. And I didn't enjoy it. And we endured it best we could without being rude. But before I could get out of there, the preacher asked, Hey, what you doing? He knew I was a preacher. He tell by under God, I was the only other person there had a suit on. No, if I was a missionary or a preacher. I got confused to go into one of them thinking, one of the fellow, I walked into one church, walked in with my youngest, of course, they was little at that time. Good to have you, missionary. I said, I ain't no missionary. He said, you're not the missionary visiting tonight? I said, no, sir, I'm not. I'm just visiting. But anyway, go back to the other story. As I was leaving, he run us down. You didn't sing? No, sir, I don't sing. I don't sing. They'll tell you I don't sing. I'd like people to stay instead of leave in pain. But my family does. And he looked and he said, my wife said, sis, you sing? Well, she can't lie in the house of God. She said, yes, I do. I want you to sing tonight. I thought we'd escape. All evening long, my wife looked at me. My children looked at me. They said, daddy, my wife didn't call me daddy. The children did. <laughs> if we got to go back there on Wednesday night, you're going by yourself. Because we don't want that. We moved to get away from some of that. But I had to learn God had a plan. I walked in one church on Sunday morning. We still visit. I walked in one church on Sunday morning. 10.30. I walked in about a quarter to 11, go to preaching. I walked in the vestibule door back there, and there's a man standing there greeting us. He said, glad to have you. I said, well, we just wanted to come to service. He said, we're fixing to dismiss. It's over. I said, does that sign say Baptist out there? And he said, yes, sir. He said, we start early. He said, we're done. It was 1045, and they done had Sunday school and preaching going to the house. Everywhere we turned, it was something weird about church until one day. I had to learn. I went through a pit. <laughs> I went through a prison, and then all of a sudden I ended up in the palace. But I still had to learn the logistics. I had to learn God's plan. You need to understand something. God did not put Joseph over there trying to figure it out on his own. God put him with the officer of Potiphar. Right. Somebody that knew, excuse me, officer of Pharaoh. Somebody that knew Pharaoh's plan better than anybody else. And by the way, everything that Joseph learned, he learned from a heathen people. God used a heathen people to help him be a better child of God. Woo-wee. You say, preacher, I wish I was around. Boy, if I just worked around the Christian people like the pastor gets to be around all the time, if I just worked around Christian people like this and or that, I sure would be a better witness. Mm. He is the only child that got down there. But he still learned the plan. And God took that heathen Potiphar, lost him on his way to hell and showed him the logistics and the plan that would make him be a successful leader when it was done. God developed him in the midst of a mess. You say, we cannot be the Christians God wants us to be in this old dark and this old dead world. We cannot do it. Hogwash, amen. If he could do it in a place that was known for their sins and their religion, so can you and I. He helped him learn. He was an officer. He was a captain. By the way, officer of the Pharaoh, 
You do a little deep dive study in that officer. You know what that meant? That meant he was a eunuch. Now, no what I can explain this real easy with mixed company and little ones in here. But a eunuch is like a steer. It's like one of them old cows in a, in a set of rubber bands. They take all desires away from them. You got a dog that runs off and you take it and have it worked on at the vet and it's a male dog and he comes back. He don't ever run off again. You know why? Because he ain't got a desire to. Right. Right. Potiphar was that kind of man because he was that commissioned to Pharaoh. He said, nothing will take my desires away from serving him. Right. And that's who God let Joseph learn from. If I'm going to learn from somebody, I sure like to learn from the best. Yeah. Amen! And God can do it. The plan. But also he had to learn how to lead. I'm trying to hurry. You know, Joseph wasn't a very good leader at 17 years old. You remember what he told his brothers? Remember he told them a dream. What did the Bible say they done? said they hated him even the more. Had another dream. Told his daddy. By the way, you say I ain't a leader. Every single human, every Christian in this building is a leading somebody to Jesus. Amen. If you ain't, you better be. Because right. that is the plan of God. That is. And you say, preacher, I want to stir it. I want revival. I want God to bless. I'll tell you how to get that. Get a burden for lost souls. That's how to do that. That's how to do that. 17 years old, he told his daddy a dream. His daddy, the Bible says, rebuked him. But somewhere along 17 and 30 something by the time he got to Pharaoh's dream, Pharaoh has now said, Thou art the man. Should we look for another? This is the wisest man the God fear. And by the way, ain't it amazing how these heathens knew the presence of God? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in there. What old Nebuchadnezzar says, there's one in there that looks like the Son of God. He should not have known who the Son of God was because the Son of God had not took on a body. But guess what? He knew what he was. Amen. He knew what he was. Just like this. Guess what? They may be a heathen crowd, but they still know the real presence of God. Amen that God was on his life. God had blessed his life. Pharaoh looked at him and said, is there any other one that have the Spirit of the Lord on them like this? How do you know what the Spirit of the Lord is if you ain't been taught the Spirit of the Lord? That's an amazing thing, but God done it. Because you know why? He was taught how to be a leader. I need you to understand something. In the pit, he learned how to be a leader. In Potiphar's house, he learned how to be a leader. The Bible says that Potiphar's house was blessed beyond measure. Remember that? Yeah. Why was it blessed beyond measure? Because he was the second man in command in the house. Right. Understand, in them 13 years he was there, he had went from being a slave to the second man in charge in the house. And guess what? Just not about three or four years after that, he becomes the second man in charge of all of Egypt. But yet his brothers, when he tried to delete them, they hated him even more. And that's God's people. But they hated him even more. He learned how to be a leader. How did he do that? In his prison, guess who God sent his way? A chief butler and a chief baker. Now you know who's important to the man of Pharaoh besides his bodyguard? The man carrying his cup. See, what was in that cup was very easy to take that man in leadership out. So the man given the cup had to be trusted beyond measure so that the leader's life, because here's the thing, the man toting the cup, the baker, was responsible for the 
Brother Doug told me, he said, you don't eat much when you're around up here. He said, eat two salads. I ate a hamburger today. Thank you. I can't. I'm tore up bad enough the way it is. And the last thing I want is my gut. I'd rather be growling from hunger as I had growling from other stuff. And nerves will cause you to do that. Amen. And mine get tore up. Bless God up. I've been doing this for 28 years. And the last place I always visit before I get to the pulpit is the bathroom. Do you have a do you have a bathroom in your baptism pool that thing there? Now I'm talking about over there, not in that pool. <laughs> the next thing I want, our, our new building, there's going to be a bathroom in the men's side of that thing with a toilet in it. Urinal or something. Because when I bail off preaching, in that, I've been preaching and I go straight to baptism, first thing I need to go is go to the bathroom. That's the aggravating thing ever was. Sitting there like, it's worth Thank you, appreciate that. Guess what? That's part of that learning. Yeah. How to deal with that. You say, preacher, what are you saying? That man responsible for that cup was the chief. He wasn't the cook. He was the head knocker. He knew he was the head man over the kitchen, the bacon. The other one was the head man over the house. Now get this. You got the head man over the guard. You got the head man over the house. And you, the fires of the house the way it runs. And then you got the head man over the cooking. Teaching Joseph how to be what he's supposed to be for God's future plan to be the second man in command in Egypt. I don't know about you, but God done a good job doing that, didn't he? Amen. But here's the key. No matter who it was teaching him, no matter what was going on, it was up to him to keep his heart where God would honor him. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? What is our main goal? Our main goal is people be saved. My purpose in life is that people come to know Jesus. That's it. What have you learned? One of these days, I'm afraid we're going to get to heaven and we're going to see what God tried to get us to learn down here. This thing ain't as hard if we had just learned. We get tore up in the pit and God wants us to learn how to be content and a soul-winning Christian in the pit. I started looking at that pit today and I'm done. I started looking at that pit today, and you know something I noticed? I said it last night, and I'll say it again. I don't find any, th any response of any kind from Joseph about that pit. The Bible says they cast him in. Didn't say he put up a fight. Didn't say he said a word. But he allowed it to happen. Sometimes we got to learn how to do that. We want to do it kicking and screaming. We think putting up a fight is godly. I don't know how big you are in Facebook and that's your own business. But do me a favor, don't show your ignorance in it. The world's looking at it. Bunch of preachers around where I'm at, this is the way they look at it. They think if it's bold, it's got to be of God, so they want to be a part of it. Bold don't mean it's God. Bold don't mean it's preaching. Bold don't mean nothing, but it's a bunch of bold words. God don't have to honor it because it's a good ideal. God only has to honor it because it's His plan. Are you in a pit? Now you learned last night, don't overlook God, He's there. But, last, but tonight, don't over, or excuse me, underlearn. I did that in high school. How many of us say wish we'd have learned a little bit more about the English language? Amen. If I'd have knew this English language would have been this it would have been this important to me. I'd have learned more about it. I got a little girl in the church. Her goal is to read a hundred thousand words before school was out. She's in the third grade. Best I know, she done it. 
She was reading the last book that was going to cross 100,000. I ain't got no idea how many books that is. That's a lot of words. Sometimes we think God ought to slap it in and we ought not have to learn it in. But I'm here to tell you this. God honors hard work. Whether it be learning or whatever, He honors it. Heads bowed and eyes closed while they're coming to get song together. God, I appreciate the privilege to be able to bow. I appreciate the scriptures, God, that you've given us. God, in Joseph's life, how that he learned how to be that successful, soul-saving someone that he was. What a great vast majority of people lived because he learned. He learned from you. The Bible says we're to take up our yoke and learn of you. Are we willing to do that tonight? The only way we're going to be that soul winner we need to be, that is the only priority of our lives, and if we're going to do that, we must learn in every moment of our lives how to do it. Help us, God, we pray. Touch these people. Thank you for their faithfulness to you. Bless their efforts and their hard work to learn. We will praise you and thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.